the movie opens with showing a man named Michael Jennings who is at a store to take a look at the three-dimensional display computer which is newly introduced into the market called a life. He then purchases one of the computers and goes to meet a woman named Rita who is a lawyer. She accompanies him to a laboratory where he will be staying alone for the next two months in order to study the computer. After she left he gets to work he takes out the monitor apart and he studies the computer's hardware and programming. Two months later he made a 3D computer which doesn't need monitor and presents it to the company and the company appreciates him and insists on immediately launching the product later. His memories from the past two months are erased by Shorty in the present of the company. They erases all his memories since he reached the place. Then Reader reminds him that legally he was never involved with the company and his creation is now Nexon property but he doesn't care about any of this and asks for his paycheck. In the next scene we see Shorty as training Mike's reflexes to ensure his brain activity is normal after that memory eraser. After getting to home he sees an invitation for a party on the table. That night he goes to a party that is being held by his friend and college roommate and the CEO of a company named Alco James. After getting to the party he sees a woman named Rachel and talks with her after chatting for a while. He invites Rachel to go somewhere else private, but Rachel leave there by saying him to meet her when he is ready to talk for real. Then he meets his friend Jimmy. Jimmy takes Mike to a room and asks Mike to do something for him and tells it is a three year work and after the work is done his memories will be wiped out when Mike tells he is not ready to lose three years worth of memories. Jimmy offers him a eight figured amount saying those three years will worth the rest of his life and Mike leaves saying he will think. After thinking all night Mike decides to take the job next day. He arrives at Alco's campus and meets a man named John Wolf who is James's right hand man their way and he tells Mike that he won't be allowed to leave the campus for the next three years and all his mail will be monitored and John tells him to surrender all his personal belongings. After getting to James's office John prepares a marker to inject into Mike's body to mark his memories. Once the project is done they will inject another dose and it will erase all the memories since the marker is placed even though he is reluctant due to the unfamiliar process. Mike still agrees later. James shows Mike their green house while Mike is wandering around the wind suddenly picks up on him. When Mike says that he give up someone turns the wind off and then the robot gives him a flower. Then Mike sees Rachel holding the controller and she tells him not to give up. Mike approaches her and apologizes for his behavior at the party while they are having a chat. James comes there and interrupts him. Then James leads him to another section in the campus and he and introduces him to a man named Dr. William Decker. In the next scene three years have passed and Mike wake up after getting his memories erased. James tells him that his job is done with a smile on his face. Later Mike returns to his house when he checks his computer. He laughs in joy upon seeing more than $92 million in his account. Later that noon he heads to his bank to recover all the items he surrendered to Alco the bank teller named. Jane hands him over the items and Mike recognizes they are not his but he doesn't care about that and is interested in getting money from his company shares. But Jane reveals that he forfeited his shares four weeks ago. Mike gets frustrated and refuses to believe that he did such a foolish thing and he gets out of there after getting to home. He tries to contact Jimmy but couldn't get a hold on to him. Suddenly he finds his door is being open. Hearing something from inside, Michael rushes in with a bat and beats a man when he tries to escape. Mike was pinned to the wall by another man. Soon more men arrives there and chases him with a taser and apprehends him. Later, see Mike is being interrogated by the FBI agent Stodge and Klein they accuse Mike of reverse engineering a classified technology which is rejected by the government while they are checking the items from the envelope. Mike tells that they are not his but Klein puts the watch on his wrist and it perfectly matches the tan line. Dodge tells him that William Decker is a government physicist after his project gets shut down by government. He sold it to James but they can't prove James's involvement cause Decker as dead now and they shows him the patents they find on a work similar to Decker's work with a signature of Mike's on it. Then Mike tells him that his memories from the past three years is erased. Immediately the detective straps him to the chair and uses a machine on him to forcibly extract the lost memory. They try their best to access the lost memories but all their efforts are in vain. Then Dodge decides to take a smoke and take a cigarette from Mike's belongings while he is smoking it triggers the smoke detectors and releases dry chemicals. 
and Mike also gets free. Mike tries to escape from there using the chance, but when he crashes onto the table where his belongings are he picks up the sunglasses from them by wearing the sunglasses he is able to see clearly through the fog. After realizing that the items are helpful to him he collects them and runs out of the door while he is running out of the headquarters. John sees Mike is escaping and is surprised about it. He tries to chase Mike but stops when he sees the agents. The agents chases him into the bus station. When he bumps into someone he drops the envelope in which he finds a bus ticket. Then he uses the ticket to get through the terminal and gets loose of the agents. After getting into the bus he goes through the thing that are in the envelope and finds a lens in a ring. A boy who is sitting in the bus sees this and comes near and pretends to trip in order to steal the ring, and Mike chases him out of the bus and stops when he sees the bank. Mike goes into Jane and asks her who sent the items. Jane shows him the papers and tells that he is the one that sent them back at Alco. James reminds that Mike was supposed to die earlier and leaving the FBI no way to get to James and also says that everything went according to the predictions except Mike's death realizing Mike predicted his future and he decided to use the machine again. He goes into the room and turns on the machine but the machine runs into an error and James gets frustrated seeing this and he orders John to find Mike. Meanwhile Mike goes to a motel and he goes through the contents in the envelope and find a spray of paper clip lighter ball bearings and alcohol swipe card and a crossword puzzle and few other things Mike tries to think what they mean but when he couldn't get to any conclusion he calls Shorty and asks for his help later he gets to the train station and while he is waiting he sees a stuffed bird and it triggers the memories of him being with Rachel and he also sees a maintenance crew with a company named Edison written on the back when he checked the envelope there is a key with a tag written Edison on it Soon, Shorty arrives there and Mike explains him everything that had happened when he tells about Decker. Shorty tells Mike about the thing Decker is working on while he was talking. Mike looks at the TV and notices the numbers matches the ones written on the fortune cookie message. Then Mike realizes that he lost the 90 million just to stay focused on these items. And he tells Shorty that he has seen the future through the machine he built with Decker. That is why he put all these items in the safe back to Alco. A scientist named Steven tells him Mike put a bug in the machine's hardware and assures he can fix it. Hearing this James thinks he doesn't need Mike anymore and orders his men to finish off Mike back at the station. Mike notices James's men and he tries to escape from them. He gives the key to Shorty and sends him into the maintenance room. He goes through the stairs and gets into another maintenance room but the men still continues to chase him up when he got surrounded. He uses the spray and the lighter to attack them and runs away with one of their gun. After that he ends up on the train track and he is followed by a man and soon gets shots by John. John points his gun at Mike when the light turns to green on the track Mike take out the magazine and throws on the track causing a small kaboom to distract John. Mike opens the circuit board and uses the paper clip stop the train. The paper clip causes spark and makes the train stop back at the headquarters. The Attorney General Brown see through the memories extracted from Mike and they think that Mike somehow predicted the future. The Attorney General then reveals that Decker has been working on a laser enhanced lens which is powerful enough to see the future and he tells his men to catch Mike before James gets his hands on him later. Mike gets a glimpses of his future in which he gets shot. Mike startles out of the bed while he is washing his face to come up. He drops water on the bank batch box and washes it to reveal a hidden logo of Cafe Michelle. Meanwhile at Rachel's place she is feeding her parrots at the apartment. Then James visits Rachel and tells her that Mike left Alco and got all his memories erased. When Rachel insists that Mike promised her that he wouldn't go through the memory eraser, James tries to convince her by about the money they offered him James gets back and he views surveillance footage from Rachel's apartment thinking Mike left a message for her while preparing for shower. The bathroom is filled with steam and Rachel smiles while looking at the mirror. But James doesn't know why cause he can't see anything later. When Rachel is leaving the apartment a man starts to follow her and goes with her into the greenhouse. Rachel gives her bag to a colleague and gets into the lift leaving the man below. Her friend gets to the catwalk and hands over the bag to Rachel and she escapes out. After, Rachel left John gets into her apartment and started looking around and he uses the hairspray to fog the mirror and sees a note left by Mike for Rachel to meet him at the cafe. Seeing this James prepares a decoy to meet with Mike. While waiting at the cafe Mike sees the decoy of Rachel Maya. He sits at the table with her and James is watching this from the camera attached to Maya's button. Maya tells Mike that she is Rachel but Mike is not sure cause he doesn't remember her. Meanwhile outside the cafe John is waiting in the car to take a shot at Mike but he waits for
for a while after noticing a cop while Maya is talking with Mike by making up a story on their relationship. James notices the envelope and understands that is how he is escaping while James is directing her. Maya pretends to know about the envelope and tells he was supposed to give her something while checking the contents. James orders her to take the Alco swipe card after taking it while Maya is leaving she kisses him goodbye. But this triggers Mike's memories of Rachel and he asks her about his favorite baseball team. Maya pulls out a gun knowing that her cover is alone. Soon Rachel arrives there and knocks out Maya. Mike notices John outside who is ready to take a shot. Mike and Rachel ducks to takes cover while he shoots Mike takes the swipe card from her and escapes into the parking lot. He takes out the BMW key and tries to find the car but it turns out it is not a car but a motorcycle. Mike rides away on the motorcycle with Rachel and is being followed by John and his men. He drives up to get away from them and soon one of them gets struck by a truck. Then Mike enters a shipping yard. The envelope falls after he drives through the empty containers. Rachel gets down to pick up the envelope and Mike continues to divert them while she is about to pick up the envelope. John shoots at her but Rachel still manages to get the envelope. Mike gets a car crash into the pipes and makes gravel rain on another car and resulting it to crash. He gets Rachel on the bike and rides away when the police cars arrives and starts to chase them. John stops. Dodge tells Mike they will help him but he continues his escape. He goes to a tunnel small enough to fit a car but still the officer chases him up on the way. The car windshield breaks off after hitting a rod and Rachel throws her helmet onto him later that night. They gets to a hotel. Mike is still suspicious about Rachel and tries to check her bag soon. Rachel catches Mike and gives him a photo album which contains their pictures together. He looks Looks through the photos and the video plays inside, but even after seeing all this he doesn't remember anything. The next day while talking with Rachel he remembers Jane told him he signed for 20 items and but there are only 9 he looks at the stamps on the envelope and finds one of them is odd. After looking through the lens later they both goes into a science lab in a nearby school and uses the microscope to check the stamp. They discover that stamp contains microscopic images of newspaper articles hidden on it. He finds out these newspaper articles are about future and it says a war will wipe out the humanity. Due to the machine he built he understands knowing the future will endanger humanity and they decides to destroy the machine. Next scene they go to Alco and while waiting in line for security check they throw ball bearings at the metal detectors to trigger the alarm and they use this distraction to get into the campus. Seeing this James orders the guards to leave the lab entrance while they are Getting in an undercover agent sees them and reports this to the FBI. They both get there and uses the swipe card to enter. Then Mike uses the Allen wrench to open doors console. 